right, you guys, uh, welcome back to the podcast. I'm joined with a uh, good friend of mine, a fellow martial artist, a competitor of mine, one of the faces of sportmartialarts.com, Mallory Woods. How are you doing, Mallory? I am doing well, Ben. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing uh, really, really good. Uh, so for uh, people who may not know, um, you know sportmartialarts.com, like, you guys are like, you, you've got to be like the number one, at least here in the States, the number one uh, sport martial arts media entity right now, right? I would like to think that we are. Uh, just to, let's see, I'll give a mini, mini history review. Uh, sport martial arts, or SMA, was actually originally started under the name of Mazalink, and I didn't found it. So this all credit goes to Emily Cooper, because if mm-hmm. she ever hears this, uh, I'll, get a, I'll get a text. I'll get a nasty text. <laughs> but Emily Cooper actually started this, and if I remember right, and I'm going to try to get the story right, um, you know, and you definitely need to have her on for historical accuracy. She, um, I remember seeing her at a couple students, uh, a couple tournaments, and both her and I were in college, this is years and years and years ago, you know, SMA is well, well over 20 years old. And she had the old VHSC camera. It was just yeah. a step below the giant one you had to put on your shoulder. And I asked her, what, she, what, are, you, what are you doing? She said, oh, um, uh, you know, I have so many students that I bring out. She had a karate school. She was in the uh, state of Ohio at the time. And she was saying, well, I have a lot of uh, parents always ask, well, how do my kid do? And I could tell them, oh, well, they won this. And you can see the trophy or they won that. So I figured I'd just go ahead and videotape it. And i would find some way to put it up on the internet. Now, you have to know the internet at that time. <laughs> There's no YouTube. Um, Google should have been in its infancy. However, the search engines are probably search engines are probably Yahoo and maybe Alta Vista and some other things that everybody's listening never even heard of. Yeah, yeah. And uh, she got some web space and call it Mazalink and Martial Arts something something something. I can't even remember what the acronym has. Um, and it's still the actually original Twitter handle right now. It's at Mazalink on Twitter. A little shout out, mini plug there. But she went on and did that and developed. Um, got some got some ways to get the photos up and the videos up and she displayed them. And I remember to quote Jake Kahn, if you made it up there, it was like you were well known because the way bandwidth was, a lot of people in school had higher bandwidth they could use, you know, dial up was still the way to go at home. You didn't have any high speed or anything else like that. So Jake would say, I would actually go to see, you would see listed like a form by John Valera or a form by Arnold Chun. And he would hit it to download. He'd go to class and he'd come back and it would just be finishing download. And then he would watch it. And you think about these things, they're only like 240 by 144 or something like that. Mm-hmm. Little tiny little postage <laughs> stamp size video, but still they took care of it to download. But, uh, you know, he, I remember just to use Jake as an example, he would say, you know, I knew I had made it. One, one, I was blown out of my mind um, because I had made it there. And, you know, because you had to be so selective at the time. So um, I was still competing and, uh, I helped Emily with a couple of tech, couple of technical things. Uh, I'm, my background is in computer science. So I helped her with some programming and everything. And eventually, I, I don't remember what year it was. It was, you know, I just about stopped competing. I'd show up to a specific tournament here and there. And she asked, hey, I, I'd love to have your, your help on um, this, that, and the other. And I think my first actually event coming with them, coming to them with was America, because it was easy for me to drive to, just mm-hmm. drive it up to Philly. And um, I remember I was in charge of uh, sending out tweets and everything. And, you know, I had to really learn how to use a camera. Uh, I, and if Nick is listening, I'm still not very good at it because <laughs> he is the picture god of SMA. And I, that's not my forte. I'm, yeah. I'm pretty decent with that. I'm getting, getting a little better. And my job kind of is to do a lot of the hosting and also to help out with the technical issues uh, and also technical challenges. And we have, a, we have a lot of good people. There are so many people more talented than me. It's very easy to put me in front of a microphone and let me describe what I see versus uh, doing the heavy lifting and hard stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's an important job, though, too. I mean, good, good commentary, man. That, that makes for uh, good events. But, you know, yeah, I mean, uh, Emily, Nick, you, all you guys, man, just do a, just a fantastic job with it. And, I mean, it, it's a testament that you guys are still around and, you know, still doing it and, you know, at all the major tournaments. So, like, like I look at you guys as kind of like the – archivists, I don't even know if that's a, the correct word, of the sport. You know, I mean, you guys have been like, like videoing it, you know, covering it, archiving it for all this time. So I feel like you guys do have like a really good handle on the sport. You guys, I'm sure you guys have really good, interesting takes on it. And uh, so, so one of the main reasons I wanted to ha- uh, have you on today was to kind of talk about like what sport karate looks like today and what the future of it is going to look like because like, you know, we're in kind of unprecedented times. You know, mm-hmm. if, if you would have, you know, told me four years ago that, the NASCA circuit would ever be canceled, I'd be like, yeah, no way. I mean, like, like what event could happen to where that mm-hmm. would happen? 
uh, definitely thank you uh, for that compliment. And it's interesting because there is so much video that no one has seen um, that either is on an actual physical videotape that Emily still has to digitize because one of the hardest things that uh, biggest challenges that SMA faced was that she and Nick and whoever, or even if I was involved at that point, they were going to take a bunch of pictures, a bunch of tapes, and then you would take those home and then she would have to digitize them and then she would have to edit them and then she would have to upload them. So looking back then and speaking kind of on that behalf, again, I wasn't 100% involved, but I can tell you from from that era to now, one of the biggest things has been digital editing, also everything being digital, and also being able to have a video camera in your pocket, which is just about everybody's smartphone. Yep. Now, we have the ability to, um, I mean, I think about almost every new iPhone I get. If I go through this iPhone that I'm looking at right now, it's got a lot of pictures and video from people I've taken from tournaments that I'll take, I'll interview, and then I'll you know, drop them on over to Emily and everything. I'll forget to go delete them or, or archive them and everything. But I'm carrying around footage and history of two years back. I could probably pull back things from WKC 2014 on my phone oh, wow. because it's just followed me around for, through iCloud and everything else. But, <clears throat> excuse me, the having, having that um, digital technology has helped out tremendously. I know live streaming has helped out yes. really well, especially for everyone. And if you think about it, we serving as kind of like history makers or archivists to, you know, con to continue to use that term. It's helped, uh, I know it's helped people with their resumes if they're going on to do work in the martial arts. Maybe it's for movies, maybe it's mm -hmm. for commercials, maybe it's for stunts. But, you know, we've actually got, if you think about it, as somebody that's older than Danny Ekin. I mean, literally older than Danny Ekin. Yeah. It's just like, wow, we've really reached a milestone. So we almost have an entire history for everything of his that we have captured that can show him growing up. You know, you got little Danny, you got this, that, and the other, you got oh, Danny cool, three years ago, yeah. et cetera. And so that's kind of cool. And in addition to that, we have so much other stuff that um, we kind of had this internal like slow project that's going on. A lot of the stuff is being digitized or found, you know, like, oh, it was, it was on this external drive and thrown into an archive that is being continually backed up and everything. Like, for example, one day when um, we actually have it and can be put out, I will tell you this because I witnessed it and I, and I didn't know that Emily uh, videotaped it. There was a tournament in uh, Las Vegas. Uh, I want to say it was... I think it was Stan Witz's tournament. It was over like Labor Day or something like that. We all went out there and I can't remember if I was on CJB or whatever team I was on at the time. Anyway, I was out there, I was competing and the tournament was over four days because it was Labor Day. So that was great. Um, you, we didn't have a, a, a rush. It wasn't like, hurry and get Friday stuff done, slam right into Saturday and then everybody jump on a plane Sunday. But it was like, no, it's actually kind of laid out in Vegas uh, in Labor Day, great place to be. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of us went out to a karaoke bar after... Friday's event, I think it was, because it was so light because the event was so so spread out. And there is a videotape of Damon Gilbert singing "Like a Virgin" by Madonna. By Madonna. <laughs> there's a there's video of Jason Tankson singing um, "Beat It" by Michael Jackson. There's a tape of Damon Gilbert singing "Welcome to the Jungle." Uh, so so th this the world needs to see. Oh yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> yeah great blackmail material. <laughs> Oh, oh it's, 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 it's great. And that's probably one of the reasons why it's been held out. You know, when, when one of those checks don't clear, this that's is right. what everybody's going <laughs> to see. Right. So, and, and so, you know, you think about that in terms of, we went from videotapes to digital video, video editing and live streaming and everything. And with that, we're able to capture a lot of the moments we can have cameras in almost every ring and try to capture everything that's going on in that ring. It's the, the technology is still not perfect. We're doing everything we can. One of the things we found is we had to have, spare batteries at every ring and everything else. And of course you always have to have good internet. That is probably the biggest Achilles heel for anything. Yeah. And as long as you have that, we can archive and we can cover. And it and not only does that, but it gives a sense of history. Uh, people can go back and say, and you know, we can go back and say, hey, you know, we're, we're coming up for the uh, Warrior Cup. Let's go back and see who won it the past three or four years. Let's look in the division. Let's look at open weight. And we can go right there. And as long as it's been archived properly, we can get right to it, bam. And we can pull that information and bring up a story with that. You know, this person has, uh, like Morgan Plowden has won so many Warrior Cups. Yep. And you can go back and see Morgan winning, 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 and then see the year that she missed because of her ACL surgery. Someone else wins. 
And then you wonder, like, is Morgan coming back? She does. She wins again. But you can build a story off of that. Yep. So therefore, having that archive enables us to move from there. Kind of, you know, like where we are now, like you said, if I would have gone to any movie producer uh, last year, say in February last year, and say, guys, I got this great script. Listen, so the world's going to be shut down by a pandemic. First of all, we're going to lose Kobe Bryant. Boom. We're going to lose Kobe Bryant at the beginning of the year. We're going to have this great pandemic. There's going to be murder hornets. There's going to be all discrepancy about what's going to happen in November with the United States election. There's going to be this, 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 this. And I guarantee you, every producer would be like, yeah, this is not believable. Um, (laughs) You know what? Come on. You got to have some believability in this kid. We're not going to buy And thus, we are where we are in August of this year. Uh, NASCA has essentially been shut down. The season has been pretty much virtually canceled. We have virtual tournaments. We did one today. Um, I mean, just like, wow, just uh, if you would have come back and said, said that that would have been what we're dealing with now, no one would have believed you. No, Absolutely no. no one. It, it is, man. It, I mean, it, it's, it's just like, like, it just seems like since February, it's just been like one crazy thing after, after the next, you know. It, it, it just, unfortunately, it just seems like there's just no, like, sense of it stopping. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I, I can unfortunately kind of see a scenario where the NASCAR season doesn't resume next year until maybe later in the year, because like I, I don't, I don't think we're going to be in the clear, you know, from this for for a while, and you know the 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 safety precautions and stuff like that aren't going to be in place. We're going to be able to do. I can't imagine any promoter would want to be like, you know, the kind of person who it gets traced back to them that they, you know, mm-hmm. caused the, the pandemic to surge again in Chicago or, you know, God forbid, you know, like X amount of people, you know, got traced back to getting the virus from there and ends up, you know, losing their lives or the family. That'd be awful. I mean, no one wants that. I mean, I agree with you completely. And the great thing about this is that you guys, it can, this is audio only. I, I'm changing my background to, <laughs> to go with what's going on. Yeah. So that's a piece you guys are missing out. But I mean, I mean, you're exactly right. No one wants to, have that happen to them. No one wants to, for a sense, for lack of a better term, be the blame of uh, any sickness or death. Mm-hmm. And right now we are at um, a period where, unfortunately, it, it, from what I can tell, this virus is so contagious, you can have an event like that uh, where, where someone who maybe is asymptomatic and they go and, you know, we're all in close quarters together. I mean, you think about how we just lived our lives, like, you know, last year, we would all go sit in a packed movie theater. Movie theaters just opened up, and yeah. I don't see myself going to a movie anytime no, soon. I, I, yeah, as not, much as I love the movies, I, yeah. I, I would not go. But uh, it's, it's, this thing can spread so fast, and no one wants to – and also one of the things that's kind of hard is that while through tracing and everything, it, it may be even harder to put said person – at said event and say this happens mm-hmm. but still there's always suspicion like everything was fine until you went here and then boom this happened and no one wants that on their record that's uh that would be terrible that would be uh we have too many good people out there that would feel that uh something like that would be their fault would be you know crushing to them yeah you know, you know one of the good things though i, I you know, or as good as we can make it is you know the, the sport is adapting you know it's, it's not like we've shut everything down it's not like we, we, we've given up um, you know, and, you know, one of the things that you guys are doing, I, I, you know, I definitely commend you guys is you guys are doing um, a lot of virtual tournaments online. So uh, uh, how are you guys doing that? Like what, what, what are you all doing? Uh, what, what kind of like stuff are you using software wise and how's that going for you guys? So the idea for going virtual, I remember um, when the idea for that came up, as you mentioned, you know, February things went on. And for me, like the last place that I went, I was actually at the Irish Open. And one of the reasons why it was so important to me is because every time I go somewhere and travel, my daughter, my youngest daughter, her name is Brooklyn. Uh, she's 12 and she always asks, like, I want to go with you, daddy. So I was like, all right, this year I'm going to surprise her. I'm going to take her with me to Ireland. Yeah, nice. Great, great timing, of course, you know, <laughs> that um, uh, wonderful if, if we go here and everything. But I think about it, we really got kind of lucky because when we got to Ireland, um, talking to the officials and everything there, they said, what we've done and let me see if I can set the stage. Italy hadn't gotten hit really hard. Mm-hmm. And what they were doing at the Irish Open, and they were saying that if you're from this part of Italy, you can't come. We physically will not allow you to come to the tournament. So imagine, let's put it in terms of the United States. If they said, um, anybody from New York, uh, kind of which was the next big place, 
if you're from New York, you cannot travel. That's it. We will not bar you. You know, we'll stop you at the borders. You can't come. If you're from New York, New Jersey, and let's say Connecticut, you just can't. The rest of the United States, come on in. No problem. You're fine. So they have banned, uh, and I don't remember which two, two or three cities from uh, Italy they had banned, but they said, you know, there were people there still from Italy, and they were like, if, yeah, if you're from here, you just can't come. And as, as we know from what happened, the entire, entire country got hit really hard, yep. and the entire, entire country was locked down. We saw many videos of people saying we heard many stories of how they couldn't even live. Uh, one of my friends was over there the, that entire town. Um, uh, he's a martial artist uh, specializing in Arnis and, and Filipino fighting arts. And he was over there teaching. He he's, he was there stuck the entire time, oh. and 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 talking about you know you can only go out and go directly to the grocery store and come back and how they where they weathered and they survived it. Meanwhile, we're over in Ireland and and I and I told my daughter like, look, every time you go past this hand sanitizer, I want you to use it. I, I don't care if you bathe in it. I want you using it. You know, watch touching surfaces and everything. And we still really had no idea how things were going. We yeah. still you know, so we get over there and get back. And fortunately, everything was fine. And then the idea was like, ha, huh, what do we do? Everything shut down. And someone brought up the idea of virtual uh, information, you know, virtual things. Um, it was actually uh, Tolly from Germany that said, hey, we're actually holding a top 10 workout. So I actually interviewed the, the German top 10 team asking how they were dealing with things. I think we we're about a month and a half, maybe two months into things. And they were saying, well, you know, this, that, and things are going on. And now they were, they were having great uh, top 10 workouts. Uh, they were actually free. They were asking for donations for someone who was uh, sick that was battling um, some they, I don't remember as a person who was battle, battling medical conditions, but they were they were taking they were accepting um, um, donations. Mm -hmm. So um, you know you saw more people doing virtual seminars and other things like that. And then the idea for people um, were doing things um, where they were teaching classes um, and everything. So the idea was like, hey, let's do a virtual tournament. Okay, well, how do we do that? Uh, so. <sighs> We, we were thinking like, okay, what's the easiest way to do this? So obviously one of the first things that you can't have is you can't have any sparring yep. because that requires two people um, that requires two people in the room, uh, at least in physical, physical space. Um, you can do forms, you can do weapons, you can do breaking. And we made up a couple of events, yep. uh, the toilet paper challenge, um, pet tricks, even had one for dad tricks right around, right after father's day. So we started figuring out, trying to figure out what's the best way for us to do this. Um, obviously, if I could go back, uh, you know, nine months, I would invest heavily in remote software, you know, where we are like, we're talking right now. Uh, we would use, we looked at a lot of different things and, you know, not one, one, one offered some things better than the other. Uh, we eventually settled on, we, we use, you know, zoom to bring everybody in and bring them on up and have our judges there and, we would judge them and give them their scores and go from there. Um, and that also enabled us to live stream it. Uh, we, we were able to do it live so that people can see, uh, and, and it's sharpened the edge of some of the competitors. Mm -hmm. You know, we would do things like first timers division for those that have not ever competed in a tournament before. I'm like, why not here? You're in the comfort of your own home. Yeah. Yeah. Do it. So that's, you know, the idea came from, came with about that. It's gotten tremendously better. Like, uh, I mentioned today we did we did the second half of our event today, we did the first half yesterday, and yesterday was smooth. It was just man, we were just we were just running one run after the other. Everyone was there. They were they were they were there in the room, and just like a tournament, sometimes you have to chase people down. Like, yeah. hey, where's this person? You know, um, and we we did it for all free. We did it free, which was uh, was a good gift to the community. Oh yeah, that's that's awesome. So, um, so, so you're doing it on Zoom, and of course, you're having to deal with like the the normal Zoom issues that you know. If if you have a karate school, or if you if you're training at a karate school, like you know what those are, you know, like right. people lagging out, not being able to hear, and stuff like that. Uh, but even even with all that, how how do you feel the uh, the participation has been? Um, like you guys just had one this weekend. How how was that uh, attended? So it was attended pretty good. We get uh, we get notifications as people are coming in. Uh, we'll get like an email, this person registered for this, this, that. And like, like the one was thing that was crazy. The first one we did, people registered for everything. I mean, they're, they're people doing like 20 events if they can. They're like, I want to do this, I want to do this, this. And it's like, man, this is, this is going to, the, the first one took a long time. Actually, we did it in one day and we learned from that, um, you know, hey, we need, we need a better system. We need to do X, Y, Z better. Um, I'll tell you one thing that was funny. Um, I didn't, didn't, I wasn't paying attention that much. Uh, I was looking on the list and I'm calling people to go and I said, wait a minute, these guys are in Britain. 
because I didn't notice at the time that it's like 12 o'clock over here. And I was like, they're running out of light. <laughs> and then uh, we would go back and we call them again. And it's like eight o'clock at night. Uh, we had one competitor that was, um, they were from Spain. And it's like two o'clock in the morning. And that's this cool. kid's out there, Kiai, and, and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's, <laughs> that's commitment. Um, we, we had a component, uh, and it wasn't in my room today, but we had a, a competitor from Australia. And I was like, I'm sitting here trying to think like, wait a minute, what time in Australia is it going to be? Yeah, like, start like, hour nine, a, yeah, nine o'clock central time. Uh, you know, I probably can Google that, figure it out, but I, I, I meant to do that, but I forgot because they were not in my room. Uh, we, had tr- we had a tremendous amount of participation from uh, South America. We had a lot of Guatemala today. We had Venezuela, uh, Chile, um, and it really makes me uh, wish that I had uh, brushed up a lot on my Spanish if, if we mm-hmm. run into an issue. Uh, we've had uh, Edgar Cardova from, from Guatemala, who has been an absolutely godsend uh, every time that he's in the room helping us out judge. And if I get into an issue that I <coughs> need to explain something, he just busts out. Boom. You know, he's, he's, he's fluent in Spanish and English. And uh, we've had DJ and Pia that have helped us out. They both, they're both fluent. They, they help us out. So it's been great. We, we've had one gentleman from Germany that competes every tournament. And there is a 10 hour, I think, 10 hour time difference between mm-hmm. us and Germany. And he's out there the entire time. And he does, he does this thing. So it's always good that we start at nine o'clock central. Because if not, he'd be out there in the dark uh, by himself doing, you know, pretty soon it's just a guy and he's doing it outside. It's just a guy outside in the park doing karate as people go by. We actually had a competitor that looked like they competed in a mall. I don't know what the story was behind that day, but God did a solid count and he won. And I'm looking up like, is that a store behind him? Yeah, it is. He, I mean, wherever you can find space. Um, some people can do it in their, their housing. I found out a lot of people have designated spaces, maybe in their basement a uh, spare bedroom where well, they'll throw down these little puzzle mats and they can work kata. They can work kicks. They can, if you can hang a heavy bag or you can get yourself a, yeah, um, yeah. you know, like a, a century uh, slight plug for a century, I guess a uh, kick bag there. Um, but you can do things like that. And we found a way as martial artists to make this work. We've adapted. Yes. It, 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 it's, it's, it's really cool to see that too. And you, you brought some good points. I, I didn't even think about, because like, like like you know, when when the ideas were tossed around about virtual tournaments, I know one of the things um, I, I saw people talking about was, well, will they do them live versus um, pre-recording? Like mm-hmm. you, you you record your kata, mm-hmm. or you record your weapons routine, and you send it into a panel of judges and do that. Um, but you kind of uh, like what you were saying before, like, like like having all these different people from like all around. Well, they're all in those lobbies, getting to watch each other, getting to interact with each other, kind of you know building that community that you wouldn't really be able to do that with a, you know, pre-recorded uh, type of uh, system. So that, that's a, that's a really good thing. It, something else I think too, like this could be like a really like perfect way to like introduce people to the sport who mm-hmm. like maybe have like bad anxiety, who are just like, like really afraid of crowds or like really afraid of like getting up in front of strangers and having them like judge you. you know, I feel like it'd be a lot different doing it in the safety of your own home. Mm -hmm. You know, I think you have a great point there. And I think that staying at home and what the pandemic has taught us and the lessons that we will take from this is one, everyone should have better hand hygiene. Be careful of the surfaces that you touch, knowing that every time you touch something, you could potentially bring in flu germs or something else in contact with you and get infected. Two, Curbside pickup is here to stay. I love ordering food and just wheeling my car up, you know, absolutely pulling this, you know, and, and, and opening my window as they throw it in as I complete my 360, well, in my head maybe, and I just drive on off. I never stop. Uh, and also, you know, I order something from Best Buy, curbside pickup, drive it up there, guy tosses it in, boom, I'm gone. You know, I, I never even got out the car. And I think that, um, that having an event like this will help people uh, be introduced because one, you know, if you have someone that you're not sure how they're going to handle competition, and like you said, maybe they have anxiety and everything, this is the perfect way to introduce yeah. uh, them to that. You get them to come on up and you show them how to do things. And it's a, it's a sense of, uh, it's a sense of, you know, common, like you said, you're in a familiar environment, you're at home and introducing them to you. And also we have a lot of fun with this. Um, one of the things that we, we did is that, and, and I'll mention this, this is, um, uh, Jill Greenhall's idea years ago. He had something called Super Forms. Mm-hmm. And what he did is he had this wheel, imagine Wheel of Fortune, 
and he wrote down uh, all sorts of different things on the wheel, uh, soft style, creative, weapons, blah, 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 blah. So you can imagine a wheel, however big the pie slices are, okay. those what he had written out. He would then spin that wheel and whatever came up, you had to do. So if you came in oh, there, you worked the heck out of your creative forms and all of a sudden you got soft style. Well, hey man, uh, <laughs> take cool. your shoes off and, and let's get limber. Let's see what you got. So we actually started having more fun with this. You know, we were, we had soft style on there. We had hard, we had soft style, we had creative, we had weapons, we had this, that, and that. I said, you know what? People really don't want soft style. So we began rooting for soft style. And I don't know <laughs> through the willing of this random number generator soft style start coming up. I said, you know what? Let's add another piece of pie. Break dancing. Fine. Break dancing on there. All right, boom. So, and then we started getting real, real funny with it. It was like, uh, freestyle rap. How about it? Uh, you know what? Boom. And it came on up there. And some people just jumped in and did it and to see where people's That's comfort awesome. level was. Someone actually tried and they made up a rap, right, boom, right there, which was great. So you have fun with it. And that's been one of the most popular events. People were dreading like, oh, please don't, don't let me get breakdancing. And then all of a sudden this kid gets breakdancing and four people come out and he's got a whole troop and a whole dance routine. I was like, you planned this. Ah, I see what happened. You're practicing. But yeah, he was like, oh, please let me get breakdancing. You know, wink, wink. Uh, I don't want it. And he gets, he's like, yes, okay, great. Let's go do it. So that's been a lot of fun. But I, I agree with you. I think this is a good introduction uh, to people to, you know, maybe they want to compete, maybe they don't. I mean, I've always been a competitor. And I've, for me, being nervous is a part of knowing that I'm in the moment. You know, mm -hmm. um, I only worry when I'm not nervous. If I'm not nervous, I'm like, no, what's wrong? <laughs> yes, what, yep. what's, what's, what's happening? When I'm nervous, I know I'm right at home because I know this person's nervous and this person's nervous. And I feed off of it and I do whatever. That's what, yeah, that's, oh, that's, that's interesting. So do you feel like, let, let's kind of like transport ourselves to the future where there's no more coronavirus. You know, we've... You know, we're all vaccinated or whatever, or it's gone away. Everyone's, you know, finally, you know, put, you know, started wearing their masks and it's all died down. So like, we're back to like in-person tournaments, all this kind of stuff. Do you think that there'll still be online tournaments or have you guys even talked about maybe continuing doing virtual tournaments um, even after we're able to go back to quote unquote normal? Um, so that hasn't come up. That discussion hasn't come up. However, I welcome the day when that can be a discussion. Like, do we still need, you know, do we still need to do this or yeah. should we still do this? And I could see that being a yes. And uh, especially for, I mean, let's look at it this way. If you were a tournament promoter, let's say you're doing it for actual cash and prizes, because mm -hmm. again, ours is, ours is free. And you said, hey, you know what? I'm going to run this virtual event. Um, and you can reasonably schedule it where you uh, hold to a schedule, then you could say, I'm gonna do this virtual event. Here's what you need to do. You need to have an open space. You need to perform your cardio weapons form or whatever events you're offering. And where we can see you, I've got my three judges. Send me money through this and we'll, we'll have that. And, and, and here's, I don't know what, you know, maybe the trophies, they mail them out. Maybe they mm -hmm. do gift certificates. You know, you could, you could generate um, an Amazon gift card like this and email it to a person that'll have it within five minutes. So you could do things like that. And let's say you, Break the cost down even more, you know, $20, $15, whatever the price point is. I could see it still working because let's look at it from a, whole, a total cost point of view. Mm -hmm. You don't need a place, you don't need a high school gym, you don't need uh, a lot yeah, of people no think about it. Yeah, no overhead. Most people start off giving their tournaments in their own dojo until they run out of space yep. and they actually have to rent a place. Um, if you go with the no trophy option, sure, you can buy a gift card and everything else and that's lower cost right there. Uh, people's travel time. They don't have to fly. They don't have to stay at a hotel. They can be right there. They could say, hey, I know at 10 o'clock, I'm going to do this. And assuming everything runs on time, I'm going to do this. I'm going to compete. And then mm, the rest of my day is free. Um, and so it's certainly possible. I see it kind of hanging around. Um, and maybe even like, you know, maybe just an intro only tournament. Just, you know, here we go and everything. Uh, by the way, I found out something interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, during this entire time as we we're talking about virtual classes and everything so uh everybody's heard of the gracie for gracie jujitsu system they've been offering virtual classes for years not just this year they actually offer a gracie instructional set where you sign up with them i think they send you a gi and they send you a jujitsu dummy there's a jujitsu dummy that you can use to arm bars oh, so and, that's what you've on. seen it before it's like a it's like a you know just yeah, a standard dummy like, yeah exactly there yeah. you go and 
they, they have the online instruction for you to learn and, you know, hey, put your leg here and then grab here and everything. But what you have to do is you have to go before that and you have to test for your stripes. So just like imagine someone taking virtual classes that you're teaching and then they come in and they pay to take the test and they, they have their promotion or they have their stripe promotion or whatever their promotion is. But they have that. Uh, I, 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 you know, you can get all, all the way up to black, but obviously you have to come in and test. Yes. But yeah, they've yeah. had this for absolute years. <clears throat> Excuse me. I had never even heard of it, but obviously with everyone looking for online instruction now that you could learn jujitsu in your own house. To me, I, it seems like it would be a little bit tough. Mm -hmm. um, and I've taken one jujitsu class from one of my former students. I, I wish I had more time to, 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 to do it. I, the art is fantastic. Yes. But it, it seems like that would be difficult to learn because there's so much, the look, just like, you know, and talking to a jujitsu guy that used to teach at one of the schools that I would train at, he says, as comfortable as you are on the feet, that's how comfortable I'm on the ground. And I feel very uncomfortable on my feet. I feel like my feet are too close and everything. Well, all that's second nature for me. You know, if the person's popping you in the face with the back fist, hey, step away, move away a little bit. Yeah. You know, make sure you keep your hands up. To me, it seems like you need to be able to feel that with some type of, uh, uh, since you're, develop, you're, you're taking a ground fighting art, that you need to be able to develop that, you know, feel someone's body movement shift. Yeah, and everything the, and the that. resistance too. You know, and the resistance, The dummy exactly. doesn't offer any resistance the at all. The dummy does not offer any it. resistance. So, uh, the biggest thing I found out, biggest lesson, lift your toes off the ground. And I'm like, <laughs> well, what are you talking about? So as we're sitting there, as we're rolling, my toes are scraping the mat every time. I burned the skin off the knuckles of my toes, mm. both, both of them. Yeah, because they're constantly scraping. Because yep. I always wonder, like, why these guys put these little tape on their toes? Now I know. I absolutely know now. And, um, you know, what I, you know, I eventually plan to go back and everything. I know that lesson now. But, man, human skin on constantly rubbed against uh, whatever floor surface is not a good time to find out at the end. Blister City, man, that's, it's awful. Blister City, can't put socks on, can't run, can't do this, that, and the other, showers, fire, everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got those, like, like, tight, thin shoes and stuff like that. Just kills me even more. Exactly. Yeah, no, I, th I think it's going to be interesting because, like, I, I can see I, I can see kind of two sides of this. I, I can see, like, one side of where, like, people are just going to be so hungry for, like, the return to normalcy where, like, maybe people just kind of, like, I don't want to say like abandon this altogether, but like, you know, like, like they're going to want to just get back to normal as much as possible. Mm -hmm. But I can also kind of see the other side of the coin where like people are like, like there might be a market for a lot more like online martial arts training, online uh, terms and stuff like that. And I think we're kind of lucky being in the industry that we're in because we can do that. You know, how does a football team have online games? I mean, other right. than like loading mm -hmm. up Madden, mm -hmm. <laughs> playing exactly. the games out that way, uh, you, you know, like a soccer team, how does a soccer team do classes in a season over Zoom? And like, like, like me personally, well, I would never say I'm, I'm a huge fan of like teaching online classes, teaching the Zoom. Um, you know, we, we've been lucky enough where we've been able to resume uh, in-person classes, but we're, you know, we're socially distancing. We're not making any contact. We're not hitting the pads or anything like that. Um, but I, I, th I think there's going to be an actual market for that kind of stuff. And it, it'll be interesting to see if, if that kind of follows uh, in with like a market for online tournaments and keeping that kind of stuff going. I think, I think it'd be yeah. interesting to see because I think there's going to be promoters looking at that going, you know, I spend all this money getting a gymnasium or a hotel mm -hmm. ballroom. Mm -hmm. I can charge these guys maybe instead of $55, if I charge them 20 bucks, well, I get to keep darn near all 20 of those exactly. dollars. Exactly. I, I mean, I think that there are some things with anything that we go through as, uh, as, as a human race, we try to take the better part of it. At least I hope that we try to take the better part of it and learn. And like I see one of the biggest benefits uh, is, is from work. Now, God bless you if you work in an industry, like if you're a police officer, firefighter or doctor, you obviously can't do that much working from home. There's some, there's some technically remote option for surgeons as we get into robotics and controlling well, things yeah. wherever you're at. That's a little bit far in the future, but there's some of that here today. But the idea that we don't need you in this seat all the time. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a developer and I've been home since March developing right away. And I'm thinking like, wait, you know, if somebody's bidding on this contract, half of it is, let's say you have a hundred people and you have to fulfill whatever the means are of this contract, but you got to have an office to put those people in. Now you got to go run out office space. You got to pay electricity, you got to play internet. You got to do this, that, and the other. Well, what if you got a smaller space and had half the people reliably work from yep. home? You save money on the overhead. That's more money for profit. And those people get to work from home 
as long as they would, you know, do the work and everything, then you could, you can save a lot more money there. I mean, a lot of times I usually set an alarm. So I start working at the end of the day because it'll be six, seven, eight and on. And I'm looking, I'm still, cause I'm comfortably sitting here. I got a TV right there. I got three monitors right here mm-hmm. and I'm, and I've got something going on and I'm like, wait a minute, I got to go make dinner. Um, it's, it's, it's time to get on with the rest of the day. I've put in 10, 12 hours, but I think that that's something like that also is, is here to stay. Like you said, yes. Um, virtual instruction, maybe not. It's, 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 it's definitely, you know, good to get there and get, you know, more of a, you know, lack of a better term, hands-on instruction and everything. And also for, you know, like I said, for sparring, that's, it's quite difficult. It, it is. It is. <clears throat> you can build some more bad habits than good habits, but I see us taking a lot of things from you, uh, from, from this, um, that's what I'm, I'm, and like you said, I really hope we as a society learn from this. Like mm-hmm. th- there are definitely good lessons that there that are out there for us to learn to improve society. That mm-hmm. it, it, w- it would be shameful if we do not learn them and just like completely go back to how everything was pre pandemic. That's, that's kind of the rush for a lot of people. Like, can we just go back to where we're doing everything absolutely the way it was? And uh, no, we got to be smarter than that. We got to, we got to be smarter um, in terms of. I mean, obviously, nobody opened up their history books and to figure out, hmm, this happened in 1917, 1920. Yeah. You know? If you go back in the history books, you find out people say, oh, it's the Spanish flu. But let, let, let's take it back a little bit. I'm a huge fan of history. We mm-hmm. take it a little bit. Uh, and sorry, my dog's sneezing over here, making sure she's okay. Um, it was called the Spanish flu because of one reason. Okay, we were fighting a world war at that time. And what happened is they were finding out, um, you know, you had some maybe um, – British prisoners of war that had this flu and they, they get captured by the Germans and the Germans get sick and everything. And, you know, it's, it's starting to spread all out in the battlefield and reporters are saying, Hey, you know what? Um, they're American soldiers that are returning. They're returning sick with this ailment. They, they call it a three knockdown, three day knockdown because they, you couldn't do anything for three days yep. and you were just down for the count. And they, they said, Hey, you guys in the press, don't, don't say anything because we don't want this to hurt the American war effort. British took the same idea. Please don't say anything. Let's not, you know, talk about this. Well, Spain was neutral. Spain was like, hey, all these people are getting sick. These people had flu. And it got named the Spanish flu because Spain reported it. Yep. So, you know, you got to take those lessons from over 100 years ago. Yes, there, yes. There's actually history reports of people in Philadelphia staggering their work days for people getting on the trolley and the transportation you know, let, let's not all gather together. You can see old history, uh, history of people, people wearing masks and everything out there. We have to take those lessons and we have to learn them again. Oh, yeah. You know, we're, we're going to learn them, whether we learn them in the two hard weeks way or the easy or, way. Or the, exactly. You can take the easy way or the hard way. We yeah. still learn those lessons. It's, it's like masks. Like, like, I, I personally would like to see mask wearing be a normalized thing where we don't stigmatize it. Because like, like a lot of like Asian cultures, when they feel bad, but they still need to go out, they mask up and it's no big deal. In fact, mm-hmm. people look at them as, oh, they're being... Um, Polite. Yeah, being polite, polite, courteous. Mm-hmm. They're thinking of their fellow man, you mm-hmm. know, whereas like here, it's kind of like, oh, what are you, some kind of sheep who, are you sh- oh, it's, it's like, it's like, no, it's like, you, you can, you can be kind to your fellow man and put this on so you don't cough on people or exactly. sneeze on them. And you don't feel, feel, feel good. It's become unfortunately politicized. And, and actually it's funny you mentioned that because it's a true story. So right around tape for the uh, Warrior Cup this year, uh, I think it was January 19th or 20th or right around the time. The week before, I remember um, I was playing soccer and I used to play two soccer games on Monday night and I came in Tuesday and I was like, man, I'm awfully sore. My toes are sore. This is not right. And I was like, I'm not feeling well. So I took my temperature, I had a fever. Went to the doctor. The doctor's like, yep, you got the flu. And I'm like, ah, oh, man, I'm supposed to travel to this tournament and do this award show and everything else. So I actually talked to uh, Mark Plocker, uh, who is, who, he's, a, he's a doctor, but he's a uro- urologist. And I said, hey, uh, I think I still got to go. I'm supposed to do this. I don't want to pull out the last moment. I've just put a lot into this. And I said, what can I do to try to protect people from me? Because I, I, you know, I, I'm sick. He says, okay, uh, wear a mask and try not to touch as many surfaces as possible. If you use your elbows, if you use your feet, do that. Mm-hmm. Stay away from people if possible. It's going to be a little bit hard on the airplane, but you can do it um, even possible if you guys have a way to give you your own room, uh, do that. So, so I go out there, I get a mask uh, from, from the doctor. I felt, I felt really weird wearing it in January in, in the airport. And I wore it and wore it on the airplane and got there, uh, got there, did the, um, 
did the award show. And one of the things that was interesting, anybody's name that had an H in it that night, I could not make the, <laughs> I couldn't do that when I went to a coffee. So there were a lot of people, and I butcher people's names on the regular anyway, and that I've always apologized for. But anybody, I'm looking, and I'm looking for somebody's name with an H in it. I would take a wait. I would take a second. I would grab a big thing of water, and I would kind of speak and move away from the mic a little bit so they didn't hear me <laughs> gurgling. So that actually happened this year. And I remember once I was done, uh, I went upstairs. Emily was like, you're working. Go, go, go order yourself some food. And I slept the next day. And it was like noon. I said, can you come, you know, can you come down and help us? Said, yeah, I'm going to come on down. And I came down and I was still feeling so bad. I said, guys, I'm feeling dizzy. And that's just from walking down the stairs. I got to go back upstairs. Went back upstairs, laid in the bed. And I think I really hung around until the nighttime finals. People didn't even know I was there because I was in my room because I was feeling that bad. I tried not to shake anybody's hands. I stayed away from people. But I was trying to be courteous. And I understand what it was like to be like, hey, let me make sure I know I'm sick. I don't want to give you... With the exception of Terry Kramer. Terry said he's never been sick a day in my life and insisted on shaking my hand. But then again, it's Terry Kramer. The guy ate a back kick from Gerald Dawson and didn't even flinch one time. I saw it myself. So he's Superman. Don't let me yeah, yeah. tell you the difference. His immune system's on overdrive. Yeah, indeed. The guy was a teacher for so long. If you can survive that jungle and not get sick, you got something good going on. Oh, 100%. I, 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 I talk about that all the time. Like, I, I work from, you know, you know, I have a class for like uh, three to five-year-olds. And – like doing that class is like boosted my immune system so much because they're just walk, walking germ factories. That's it. You can literally see the, the rising above them in <laughs> yes. class. Oh man. Yeah. The little kids teaching little kids is like, Oh, <laughs> I'm going to yeah. get it. So, so, um, so something that, uh, you kind of touched on a, a little bit earlier about, about like, um, like not being able to spar and stuff like that, which, mm -hmm. you know, it, it does suck, you know, but like, like, you know, I'm, I'm sticking to the course, you know, I'm, I'm staying disciplined with it, you know, mm -hmm. um, but so I got, I got like my, my competition team and like that class. What I've been doing with these guys is about a month and a half ago, I bought a really good VR headset. Mm, okay. It is the coolest thing ever. Mm -hmm. And I got this just kick ass boxing game on it mm -hmm. where I'll spend like a big chunk of my morning with the headset on and it's wireless too. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an Oculus Quest. So yeah, a pl plug for them. Plug for those, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Send me a free one. And, um, I'll be there boxing. So, so one day, and I was telling those guys ab about this, and, and there was maybe like uh, you know five or six of them there, and they're like, "Oh man, we should do that." And I was like, "Oh, that's, that's technically sparring." Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so, so, we, so you know, I'd make sure you know we'd sanitize it in between all that kind of stuff, and mm -hmm. they'd all go like you know three three minute rounds on it like that, and the rest of us I could stream it to the uh, TV so up there so we could happening. watch. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I had like the uh, um, like the stool for in between rounds they would sit on. <laughs> they would sit down. <laughs> oh, it, it was just like really really cool, and like like, like I, I don't know if you've done the VR headset stuff or not. I have. I have a friend of mine that had that set up. Yeah, oh, like, like it, it's 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 absolutely. You have to remember, you're okay. You're in yes. a room because he gave he he tried. What was this? There's an elevator game. The, the you, uh, plank of Richie's plank yes. adventure. Yes. yes, and and the thing is, you know, you're on the ground, but what your eyes and what your ears and everything else are yeah. telling you, it's your brain, like your, your brain's brain like it. your brain's fine. You can see, I, I'll give you a better example. So I got the I got the VR for the PlayStation, and there's a game. Um, It'll uh, come to me in a second. Uh, let's see. It was a it was a horror game before, but they came up with a VR. Uh, uh, and anyway, in, in this game, you're on this little mini roller coaster. So as you're looking, as you know, as your body moves when you're on a roller coaster, you're moving and you're kind of leaning, and your inner ear is like, "What are you doing that for? We're not yeah. moving. Stop that!" <laughs> so you're fight you're fighting against all these other senses. And, and I absolutely loved it until I put Resident Evil 7 in there. Yes, awesome. And I perfect said, one. this is a heart attack waiting to happen. I can't do this. <laughs> I, I, I got, I, the game was hard enough, scary enough to play sitting at a TV. But yep. when you put that headset on, I'm like, yeah, um, you might not need that paramedic stop by. But yeah, I can see how that would be, uh, um, it, it can be a good alternative because it gets you moving. And with it being wireless too, you know, you're moving all the way around with, you know, with it and everything. And it gets it gets you sweating. It's 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 easier than trying to simulate something some other way. Oh yeah, you know, and, and like, like like when I was doing it, I was thinking like, man, you know, I, I could totally see like twenty years from now, like 
we ain't going to be going to karate schools. We're just going to be in our living room, put on the VR headset mm-hmm. <laughs> and be in a virtual class with people being on to like virtual sparring mm-hmm. like that. Like, uh, like, like ready player one. Yes. Like, like the vest where like, <laughs> we get punched, we feel it. Mm-hmm. It literally becomes you kick, you get shocked. To throw it back 20 more years, it literally becomes the matrix. It yes. literally becomes that, you know? Uh, of course, learning Kung Fu is a little bit easier then. Just, <laughs> just on download up, it, yep. Boom, and, and you're in. But yeah, I can see that uh, the, immers- the, the immersion of technology uh, for everyday life, it makes things closer and closer. And then also sometimes in a way it pushes it further, further apart. But that's a whole nother. So oh, yeah. That's a whole, that's nother, a whole discussion. nother discussion. It, it kind of like to like, like bring it back to kind of like what we were talking about before, like, like, like the main topic. So with like the virtual tournaments and stuff, that's really only been for the forms and weapons uh, perspective. Right. You know, that, that, that's an avenue for those guys. But something that we're seeing now just very recently um, you know, you know, if you were a fighter, it's like, oh, you're kind of out of luck. Mm-hmm. But now we're seeing the like pay-per-view style mm-hmm. events where in- instead of the normal tournament bracket structure, um, you know, the promoter will pick, you know, four or five, six fights, mm-hmm. test them beforehand, all that stuff, make sure, you know, no one's sick, no one has a fever, all that kind of stuff and do the events that way. Uh, what, what do you kind of think about that? Well, you know, I, I didn't get a chance and, and hats off to, to Jesse for, mm-hmm. for, for doing the first one. Uh, you know, he had an envision and I was listening to shout out to Travis and Chris for, for, for their podcast as he as the idea came to him and he set it up. Um, you know, I, I was wondering, like, mm, I wonder if this is actually going to work. You know, <clears throat> from what I saw, they were doing everything as best as they could, taking temperatures, making sure people had tests, um, keeping the numbers low. Yeah. So. We're, we're doing things in a controlled environment. And if you look at a professional scale, the UFC and Bellator did the same thing. Look at the NBA. The yep. NBA works because everything is in its own little enclosed mini, mini city. Yep. Look at Major League Baseball, where you have people going out and you see they've been having problems. Where the NBA say, we're going to structure everything in this bubble and you can't leave. We're going to keep it there. We're going to keep it tight. So having a scenario in which you do things like that for fighting can work. <clears throat> if you test everyone and try to keep it like that, you're doing all the things it can. Now, I didn't get a chance to, to watch that. Uh, I heard it was very exciting, uh, you know, hearing people that actually uh, uh, watched it and everything intended. So, I mean, hats off to Jess. Jess has always been an innovator. Yeah, uh, Jess has been hustling during this entire time. That's Thank the you. thing that's great. I've seen a phrase that, like, if this doesn't bring the hustler out in you, it never was, it was never in you in the first yeah. place, you know, <clears throat> to do things that you said, okay, all right, I got this limit. Okay, how do I still continue to do things that, I, you know, that I still want to do. So he's been thinking literally, as we always say, the most overused cliche outside of the box. And, you know, he's, he's done it. He had a, you know, from what I saw, great camera angles and everything. So I had soft to Jess for, for doing that. You know, uh, that guy like that, he's always been an entrepreneur. He's always been a go-getter, you know? Yeah, for real. And, and, and uh, so I think now um, uh, Alex Race and his crew, they, they got one uh, coming as well. Jesse has his next one uh, mm-hmm. coming up pretty soon. I think end of September, or October. I think I saw the, the signs for that for, for, for that time period. Yeah, um, it, it, uh, yeah, that's going to be interesting to see how that <clears throat> takes off. I mean, right now, it's the only opportunity fighters have to right. do it. So most fighters right. aren't going to turn that down. Right. Um, you know, <clears throat> I, I think, you know, the vast majority of us are kind of like chomping at the bit to get back to it. Um, but I, like, I, I just wonder if it has like, like, like for me, like what, what I like about the tournament is the, the tournament structure is its own like enclosed story. Mm-hmm. You know, in, even if you don't know the the fighters, if you don't know them, there's like when you get to the finals, like you know, like, like well, this guy had to beat X amount of people, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. And if you watch those fights, oh, he had a close fight against this guy. This guy beat that guy, and like it kind of just, I feel like you don't need to know the fighters that well to kind of like really grasp the whole thing. If that makes any sense. No, no, it does. Every every fight is a story. Yes. And and and. So goes the one before then and the one before then. And if you looked at the big picture for the entire, uh, the entire day, you see how things progressed. And if a point went this way or that way, you would have a whole different scenario. I mean, like, I'll give you a, a good example of a great story for, for a tournament. Um, Gerald, Gerald Dawson is my instructor, who, who unfortunately passed away. Mm-hmm. And watching Cam there at the Warrior Cup. And Cam didn't lose a fight. And you're seeing this progress. And one of the things that was eerie similar about that is that that tournament, Cam wore Gerald's gi, he wore his belt, and he wore his, uh, 
you know, he, he wore, every, wore everything of his father's. And I'm walking through um, the the room, and I almost broke my neck looking <laughs> because I saw Gerald. And it's Cam there, and I'm like amazed that he looks exactly like him. And he goes through, and the, you have the storyline. He didn't lose a fight. He wins teams fight. He, he, he I, I was there at that tournament. He was killing everyone that day. Yeah. And then at the end, he leaves his, uh, he leaves his father's gear in the middle of the ring. Yep. And I was very glad that Mike Chat was right there because I could pass the mic to him because I really – was I was so emotionally invested in that that I had to pass like I can't talk anymore. You you gotta you gotta take this from here mm-hmm. because I'm looking at something that is a special moment. But as you mentioned, that every fight is a story. Every uh, that you know if um maybe it's a guy in the other bracket that you know you're gonna have a hard time with, and you're mentally preparing to to go against you know fight this guy, and all of a sudden he loses a close match against someone else. Oh well, this. You know, this changes things up. Okay, great. It's somebody new. I mean, for me, I always prefer to fight someone I've never fought before. I, mm-hmm. I hate fighting people that I that I always think they figured me out or or or, or I kind of like limit myself. Like, I'm not going to do this because this guy has a good reverse punch or a good, you know, front leg or whatever. And I would prefer to fight someone that I've never fought before at all yeah. than, than to fight, fight, fight someone that I've fought every week. So, yeah, yeah there's stories to everything. Oh yeah, yeah. If, if, if I had to pick, it'd have to be like, like I want to fight a guy in like a traditional white gi. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I always hope for. <laughs> like a guy, like some no-name guy in a traditional white gi. Hopefully, it'll be like like a local dude who's trying out like a right. warm-up match. Oh, you, and that's the thing. Everybody's got to get that good. You know, you got to get the blood going. You got to get your your, your senses right. You got to get, you know, you got to get everything loosened up. Uh, yeah, that that is that is always everybody's that that first fight is always shit. Oh yeah, and, like yeah. Unfortunately, like, my, my luck the past couple tournaments you know before all this was going on was like drawing like cameron first round and stuff like that yeah you're like that's a rough pick uh, that's that's a that's a tough but you know what your mind's like you know i get past this it's all downhill coasting from there it's all downhill (laughs) once once you once you get the top guy out of there it's like all right you got this division now exactly yeah it's gonna be interesting to see um how it goes and i do i I wish all those guys the the best with it and Mm -hmm. like and like I, I unfortunately wasn't able to watch the last one either. I, I, I heard good things about it though. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I heard people say you know they didn't have any like you know serious technical issues or anything like that. I, I was kind of like when they said they were going to do it on Zoom, I was kind of thinking like, you know, oh god, is it going to be like breaking out? You know, not being able to see that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. It, it didn't seem like there was you know really big issues with that. Um, I, I hope what those guys do like hopefully use the like use this opportunity for is to kind of like build up those athletes with their stories and stuff like yes. that because um like if we look at these cards you know there's people who like even i who, who've been competing for years it's like i, I don't know like a whole lot about those guys mm-hmm. and th- this would be a perfect time a really perfect opportunity to you know you know, raise the profile of these guys, let people know their stories. Uh, I, one of the, like the classic examples I hear like, uh, like, like, like Jody would use or uh, Richard Plowden would use when talking about like, like increasing people's profile is like how many people don't know Raymond Daniels was a police officer. Yeah. And, and, and it blows my mind. Like, really? You guys didn't know that? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think, I think this is like a, a really good opportunity. Like while like we're experimenting and trying out with this new format, uh, for mm-hmm. these fighters to, you know, really like, you know, give them some good interviews, mm-hmm. uh, you, you know, like okay, invest in like the, the, the equipment and the hardware to do it, you know, come out, like, like try to find some people who can come up with um, just kick ass promo videos. Like, you know, you see for a boxing match or a UFC yeah. fight, get people hyped up. Like, like I gotta be there. Yes. I gotta be yeah. there to see this. Yeah. Like, if, it, if it was me, like, like I, I would probably, you know, either contact them for highlight videos or, or go to you guys who mm-hmm. have, you know, years and years, you know, like, like if you have someone who, um, like, I don't know, like, like, like Jack Felton, you guys have years of Jack mm-hmm. Felton videos. You yeah. guys could come up with a, just a kick-ass, like, timeline highlight reel video mm-hmm. to hype the guy up. It, it's, and also, I mean, one of the things also that, that you, you need is the, the competitor needs to speak for him or herself as well. Because there are a lot of people... And, you know, the classic line, hey, I do my talking in the ring. Mm-hmm. And you do. You, you, you're an amazing martial artist. I've seen you and everything. But when people, what was the biggest draw about Conor McGregor? Conor McGregor can fight. He was a great athlete. But Conor talk, McGregor talked talk trash. made you like, wait yeah. a minute. I, one of the things I've always thought, and I think about this, for example, no one uh, dis- disputes the greatness of Muhammad Ali. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
And at the time, Muhammad Ali, he loved to talk trash too. He would say, hey, I'm going to beat you. And he, and he always had a saying like, half the people came in here to see me lose. Half the people came to see me win, but 100% paid, right? Yep. Could you imagine Muhammad Ali with social media? Oh, oh man. Can you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine, you know, uh, everything he did was on camera, you know? Him tweeting at like Holyfield, something like that. Exactly. Just, just, just shouting out. I mean, because, you know, he's telling Sonny, listen, and one of the things that is funny, if you go back and you look at all the photos from Muhammad Ali, is he's telling Sonny Liston, I'm going to beat you. I'm the greatest. I'm, I'm so pretty. And, and he's always there. It looks like he's yelling. And the reason was is because they would say, you know, Cassius, because he was Cassius Clay then, you got a big mouth. And he says, well, people tell me I have such a big mouth. So I always open it as wide as I can. They can see how my mouth. <laughs> so that's why he looks like he's yelling all the time these pictures. So he always would be there with his mouth open and yelling everything. But he knew how to sell the fight. He knew how to craft that storyline. One of the biggest boxing storylines for me growing up was Hagler Hearns. This is way before your time, but you can mm -hmm. find it on YouTube for months. Hagler Hearns, you hear it all the time. These two competitors do not like each other. There's no love lost. There will not be a handshake. Okay, I didn't even tell you who was fighting whom right there, but all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute. They, they really don't like each other? They're not just pugilistic at prize fighters? No, they really, this guy wants to put this guy away. There will not be any handshake. There's no, there's bad blood. <clears throat> for a month, Hagler Hearns went back and forth. And it was literally just interviews. There, there's no online stuff. There's interviews. There's write-ups mm -hmm. in magazines where you can sit down with Tommy Hitman Hearns. And he tells you exactly what he's going to do to marvelous Marvin Hagler. And he's down with Marvin Hagler. They even had a commercial where Hagler was... He was, he was advertising something. He mentioned, I wonder what the other guy's eating. Probably soup. I can't remember what it was, but there it's going back and forth. You know, the medium wasn't there at the time where you could write something on your phone and everything and go back and forth. But by the time that fight rolled around, everybody was waiting for it. So you could do something on the, and it doesn't always have to be <clears throat> in the negative. We've seen that go too far these yes, days. Yeah. But you can do things and also where the competitor can speak for themselves. And that is us up for us as the media to be like, you know, tell us, sell, you know, take a minute to sell yourself. One of the greatest things that r makes wrestling so great is the promo. Yes. Yeah. You can think of many people who have mastered that art from The Rock to Ric Flair to, oh, to you know. Macho Man Randy Savage, man. He, like, pulling out the little cup of the cream. <laughs> and, and, and that's it. And just, you know, as, and, 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 as they have the crowd in the palm of their hand, even the thing is that for heels and faces or good guys and bad guys, where they're out there just – uh, you know, I'm going to defend my belt. And then, you know, you have, you have the heel that's coming out there and they say, well, you have to understand those boos are my applause. You need a good bad guy. Yes. Every story is like that. And, and, and also you think about the WWE is mastered at putting two bad guys against each other, yep, putting yep. two good guys against each other, having one good guy, one bad guy, and then one bad guy turns. And, and, you know, people are instantly drawn into that. We can do the same thing. I, I think uh, so well, too. I, th I think there's an art form to it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like a, like an interview. Like there, there is an art form to giving a really good interview, and especially, um, like I, I like to use like um, like professional video games. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, years ago, people would be like, oh, well, like, what is that? That's huge That's money. Major. Now mm -hmm. they played on ESPN. You know, you know, they, they they quickly figured out. Oh, we need to have really good commentators, mm -hmm. people who can, you know, explain high level pro moves mm -hmm. to either non players or casual players, and these people are probably not the most charismatic socially exactly. people. We need good interviewers who can draw that out of them mm -hmm. and get them talking, get them telling their stories and like selling themselves to the crowd. So people, you know, kind of, you know, get attached to them and want to, you know, be invested monetarily mm -hmm. in watching them succeed or, you know, the opposite, you know, watching a villain lose. Right. I mean, it's funny you say that because I'm, I'm actually mad at that industry because it came around 20 years too late for me. Yeah. But you're talking about a guy who was in college would stay on Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat all but until my yeah. next class. And I'm thinking like, man, I wish I if you tell me I could get paid playing video games, my life would have been completed. That oh, point. yes. I'd have been thinking that this is the greatest thing ever. I, you know, I get to do what I love to do and get and make money for. It. And it's amazing because I remember when I saw uh, the first college scholarship for E-teams. I'm like, man, we really have arrived yes, with this. Yeah. And, I, you know, now I get on there and I just get my butt kicked because I can't dedicate the <laughs> hours amount of practice it takes to be an elite uh, person, at a first person shooter or at Madden. And last time I played Madden, I was like, you know, I'm never buying a Madden again. I'm just absolutely getting embarrassed. Here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't do it anymore. 
Oh, yeah. You know, like, if, if I could go back in time, like, when my parents were telling me, man, quit playing those video games. That's a waste of time. You're not going to be able to, you know, do anything with that. And now mm-hmm. we're seeing, like, 11-year-old kids clearing, like, $10,000, $12,000 checks off of Twitch. Yes. Or, or Ninja, <laughs> the guy Ninja that exclusively is going to stream on some other platform. And it's just like he – just just the exclusive – you know, exclusivity. Oh, I'm going to botch that word exclusivity there we go for going for one platform or another or 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 having monster just sitting here with a a, a thing of monster or, or, or whatever and you're just you just you know getting checks that you're just wiping your eyes on or just throwing away or whatever it's like you're making some serious money off of a video game yeah. and you really want to go back and brag that your parents face and look at this you see this <laughs> oh, see all yeah. zeros? Yeah. leave me alone and let me play yeah Huh? Well, like, like now, like, like, like if I'm like teaching in class, you know, that's something I'll ask kids. I was like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And the kid's like, I want to be a YouTuber. I'm like, oh, oh yeah, that's, well, that, that's <laughs> legit. <laughs> that, that, that is legit. But one of the things also, and I will tell you, especially from our perspective, man, it's a lot of work. Uh, yes. I mentioned today, um, before we started the virtual tournament today, there was an outage, uh, not with Zoom, but with CenturyLink. And uh, Emily and Nick, that's where they get their main internet. It was funny because they couldn't even get into the Zoom room to make me a host so I can go ahead and do it because they couldn't get on there. Bandwidth was like a soda straw. You just couldn't, oh. they just couldn't get on there. And I'm like, man, there you go, single point of failure. And, and as I was telling everybody, hey, sorry, we started late, but we had a, a you know, there was a, there was a nationwide outage from CenturyLink. Looks like they finally got it fixed. And I would tell people, I was like, you have no idea how often this has happened at a tournament. We're getting ready to broadcast the nighttime finals. And there are people, you know, getting in their seats and we see the promoter walking up with the microphone and all of a sudden, oh. what happened? What, I think this is it. Hold on, hold on. Wait a minute. I think I, I, I got a spare power cord right here. And there's literally like um, a hospital scene out of like an ER or Grey's Anatomy. And you're just like, all right, wait a minute. I think I have a spare cord right there. Let me run and get this. Okay, boom. I got this hooked up. All right, touch that right there. Okay, we got it back up. Okay, great, great, great. Okay, we're into Facebook. Okay, they're going to go live. Boom. And meanwhile, there are people at home like, yeah, this is great. We got our tournament and everything. <laughs> and, and I'm sitting there sweating bullets. Like, are you kidding me? I, perfect example. We, were, we, we went to go um, cover this tournament in Germany. Great. I loved it. Uh, I had the great opportunity. And one of the things I am truly blessed to have is the martial arts has allowed me to travel. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I am very grateful for that. And, uh, you know, I also know that I got to go over there and do a job. And meanwhile, I'm going back and forth between these guys and they speak German and some of them speak English. Like, where are we going to be at? We're going to be in a, an old speed skate arena. They sent me the, 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 uh, they sent me the blueprint of the place. I said, this is great. I see where the rings are going to be at. Answer me this one question. Where does the internet come in at that building? And they could not tell me. Oh, God. I said, okay, well, if the internet comes in way over there and your rings are way over here, we are cooked. We were in a little small place called Inzel, Germany. Go ahead and Google it. It's at the, right near Austria, all the way down the bottom. And we were in a village. We were literally in a speed skating rink where people go to learn speed skating to go to the Olympics. It was beautiful. It was kind of early spring. Uh, warm couple days. I actually wore shorts, beautiful snow capped mountains, but there's no best buy around the corner that I can go and get Mm -hmm. something that's going to help me. So before I went out there and I didn't get the answers that I wanted and I'm really nervous. I'm like, all right, I went to Amazon and I bought 10 50 foot ethernet cables just in case (laughs) packed them with my luggage, went on out there and cameraman, cameramans and I get out there, we get the equipment, we had to drive from, Jer- from Berlin to Inzel, six hour drive in the Autobahn, which was fine, except I had a Ford and I couldn't go faster than hundred miles an hour. <laughs> and I'm getting passed by Porsches and BMWs like I'm a granny. Yeah, yeah. We get there and um, we go to the place where we're at and I'm like, where's the internet? Oh, it's right here. And as I feared, it was way far away. Fortunately, I had those cables and I could connect, connect everything up. And we were like literally inches short for one cable. We had to go get a longer cable the next day. Uh, we managed to get that. I, the guys had to drive to Munich. Seriously, they drive like two hours away to Munich to pick this up. But we streamed 97% of that tournament. And it's like, if I didn't think ahead and try to think of, I literally sat down one day and thought of everything that could possibly go wrong and the solutions for it before I even thought about getting on that plane. But we made it a success because of, out thinking it, you know, yep. thinking around the problem. And this is the things that people like, I want to be a YouTuber and everything. I'm like, well, how do you, how are you going to get a million followers? Who's going to care what you have to say into a microphone? Yep. Everybody starts at zero. And it's a lot of work to get that audience and build that audience up and everything. It's it, hard. It, 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 it's easy to look at the people who've made it and go, 
Well, they just sit around and play video games. Like, no. No, uh, there, there's there thousands, serious, 10, serious work. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and especially for those guys that do original content. Like, one, if, you're, if you're playing video games, like, one guy actually following uh, uh, YouTube, guy's name is The Rad Brad. But, like, I'm playing games, and I get to a point where I legitimately get stuck, and I'm like, all right, look, I'm going to get frustrated. I'm going to stop playing. Let me just go look at his walkthrough. Oh, boom, there it is right there. Okay, great. I'll go get that. Boom. And, 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 and he makes a ton of money in doing this by, by playing, but he's got to create that content. He's got to record it. He's got to edit it. Then he's got to push it on out. And that's a lot of work. It, mm-hmm. it is a, a lot of work, and we only see the benefit side of it. It's like kids coming to your school like, I'm going to learn how to do a tornado kick. You're like, well, hold on. <laughs> you got to learn this, 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 this yep. before you can even think about doing that. So we always see the we always see the uh, output, but not the work that goes into it. Definitely, definitely. So I, I feel like we're at, a, we're at a pretty good place to wrap this up. I do, I do have one last question though yes. for you. So you, you, I think we we started off. And you kind of talked about the Irish Open. Was the Irish Open better this year than last year when it had the blizzard? Oh my gosh! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so. Funny thing about that, um, that was my first Irish Open, the one with the blizzard. Ugh. So um, usually for me to catch a flight to Ireland, depending on what time of year it is, is the time change, uh, it takes five, five hours for me to get there because I'm on the East Coast. So boom. Uh, where Emily and Nick, they usually have to fly in somewhere else and then fly to Ireland. They usually have to fly somewhere in Europe and fly to Ireland. So... Uh, I'm looking at it, you know, trying to figure out and everything. And I've been to Ireland a couple times before with WKC. Yep. Once with the ITF. Um, and that last time with the ITF, uh, the last hurricane of the year, it was in November, the hurricane comes up and it didn't hit Ireland because it was weakened by that point. But they shut everything down. They, no schools, no businesses open. And that day I was supposed to fly to England to go visit a buddy of mine. And I'm sitting there like, oh, my gosh. Uh, what is going on? So I figure, okay, last time I was in Ireland, hurricane, what could go wrong? Here comes a blizzard. So I land in Ireland. And as soon as I turn on my phone, I get a bunch of messages. Hey, did you make it to Ireland? Yes, I did. Where are you guys at? We landed in Amsterdam. We can't get a flight out. <laughs> Stuck somewhere. Are you a couple of choice letters kidding me? Yeah, well, I'm on the phone with Delta. I've been on the phone with Delta for so long. And I'm sitting here like, Oh my God. So funny, funny thing is I saw uh, Steve Babcock and Chris Paul at the uh, airport and I actually had uh, mapped out a bus route because I checked with a few people I knew over there. I think I checked with Dean and I checked with someone else uh, that, that does tournament coverage over there. She actually does MMA and boxing coverage. Mm-hmm. But I said, can you make sure this bus route is actually good? And she said, yeah, yeah, this work. You go here, here, here. You're going to get at the, uh, uh, you know, you're going to get the, you know, the hotel. You're going to be fine. So I see Steve and Chris Paul gets off the airport in flip flops. I was like, man, hold on. Don't you live in a cold place? What are you doing? Yes. So um, we are, uh, we're getting there and he's like, I have, I have shoes and everything. So, so backpack gets off with some dress shoes. I, I'm putting boots on, you know, I'm putting, <laughs> I'm gearing up. I'm putting on. And I had, uh, I had a, a scully on and, and backpack was like, uh, I don't have anything for my hand. I was like, are you serious? So I had a spare hat here. Boom. By the way, Steve Babcock gave me a John Paul Mitchell Skelly, which I still have in my backpack that I'm looking at right now. <laughs> because of that, he's like, thank you, Mallory. You took care of me. Yeah. So we get on the bus. We go there. And, and I'm dragging my luggage through this almost a foot and a half of snow. And we get there. And then we find out. And Roy Baker and his team did a tremendous job with uh, getting that tournament together and trying to get everything working. And um, I actually commandeered a bunch of parents to help me live stream that event. And it was people like... Um, uh elizabeth roulard's mom Mm -hmm. uh tyler tyler spence um a number of other different parents that helped me live stream that event with their cell phones because the sma crew did not arrive until sunday to help along with many people i saw germans walk in covered in snow they had walked two miles change literally right there and then jump in and fight um that was my first irish open it was a great experience but with this year coming back it was much bigger, uh, man. The story, like I said, the storyline was there. Uh, you had Jack, who unfortunately hasn't won an Irish Open, and Elijah, who came that close to winning it and losing to Roman last year. Mm-hmm. And the picture that that uh, actually Elijah has up on his Instagram, and I taken of course by Nick Schneider. Yep. Um, it shows all the emotion and being right there 
and seeing Elijah hug his dad and his dad said, this is the only thing I've ever wanted for him is life. And they're, they're crying and celebrating and to capture, you know, it's kind of cool to be there at the moment to capture it on film, just a picture, that one picture of Elijah as he's on his knees and he's looking up yep. in his gear and you see the emotion, it means a lot. That picture is going to be around forever. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I hope always be part of his legacy. Always be part of his legacy. And I'm hoping the interview that uh, I, I did with them after that, where he credits Ray, and I bring up that picture he took when he was like 12 with Raymond. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's also the also deep part of that, seeing a picture of Jack take his gear off, and you got to feel for the guy. Jack's an absolutely lovable, wonderful human being, and and in order for someone to win someone has to lose but that is the story of sports yep for every big victory for everyone's dream that's achieved someone took someone else's dream from them you oh, just yeah, hope it's good. you but you understand the buildup of that their teammates they didn't fight like teammates they fought like i wanted it more than you yep. and only one guy is going to get it i mean just to be there to experience that emotion is the great part of what i get to do i get to try to bring someone else's story to something they'll tell their kids and their grandkids and and to to be allowed to have a piece of that is great yeah oh, it's, it's, it's gotta be awesome i do i i think about like what you guys do just because again like, as a fan of the sport not just a competitor of it mm -hmm. you know like like, like that, that's gotta just be a, a, a great feeling and I, I'm, I'm definitely glad to hear that it was doing better because yeah man, that that blizzard year was was, that, was well, that was that was rough and like, I, I, i've got a a podcast plan where i'm going to talk about my experience there during during that and uh i'm probably gonna have uh i think, I think maybe like uh like uh uh matthew to uh do with me because he, he was there with me like, like mm -hmm. he was like the only person from my friend group who made it you know mm -hmm. kyle didn't make it rachel craig they didn't make it mm -hmm. and like having to like deal with you know getting off the plane and getting to it because it was I mean, it was just snow everywhere awfulness or, or how we couldn't eat that night and they were checking room cards like you can't eat here unless you have a room card yeah. <laughs> because, yeah, yeah. because, or, because we're running like, out of food yeah yeah everyone's swarming the uh, vending machines yes you and you go there and it's like snickers bars there was like what water and maybe like a, 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 a an electric charger that, that you could buy i think at that first night i had uh apple juice and i think a, a, a muffin i got from the uh the night so yeah it everybody's got those little stories like yes. that it was um and like that, that's why I said I got to give credit to Roy and his team for. All right, we understand this is a major event. This is happening. Now, how can we fix this, or how can we make this better? And they did. You you got you still got an amazing event out of it. You did, yeah. It's it's, it's a testament <clears throat> to the sport and the people who are uh, the running resiliency. With it. Yeah, the resiliency of the competitor, the people that walked through. Uh, there were people getting let off um, on their version of the belt with the highway. The hotel's two miles or you know two and a half kilometers that direction. Good luck stay there and, and go to it. People changing on the floor, uh, uh, fighting right then and there, uh, not even checking into the hotel, um, taking off wet clothes from walking through snow and, 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 and going to do that. That's a competitive nature. And that's what everybody who goes, goes to any event has. It is, it is. It's stuff like that. It makes me just like, like even during like these times where like we can't, you know, compete or I, I can't get into that kind of stuff. Like, that stuff that helps keep that love alive for it. You know, I, I just I love looking back at those stories and thinking about it. You know, it keeps me optimistic, keeps me motivated, keeps me wanting to keep on with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so Malik, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, you know, I, I thought it was a good conversation. I'm glad to you know hear your takes on things. It was good. I'd love to have you back another time. Always to yeah. you know talk about some more interesting stuff. Yeah, this was this is really fun. I certainly appreciate it. It's good to be on the other side of the microphone to, to give answers instead of come up with questions yes, yeah. and, and driving the narrative. So uh, definitely thank you for having me on, Ben. I can't wait to uh, listen to this and I gotta, I gotta catch up on the other episodes. Um, I find myself trying to listen to more podcasts as I'm working from home a lot, as I can put the TV on without sound and yep. I put the headphones in and I go off and start writing zeros and ones and listen to things. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's a lot to keep up on. And when it's not raining, I have my bike and I don't listen to music. I'm listening to podcasts. I'm so always listening I will to definitely. Me. I'll put that on. Let me let me give a plug for our next uh, event. We'll sure. be having. I just found this out. It's called the Scrub Skirmish, the <laughs> Scrub Skirmish on September twenty sixth and twenty seventh. Uh, that will be all virtual. It's open, live, and free for everyone. And I'd also like to send out a, a little small personal plug of mine. I've been working with Bellator for the past um, 
three Bellator events. I've actually been uh, having a, 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 a what they call a breakdown party with uh, the great Robin Black. Uh, I, Robin and I had, oh, wow. had become really good friends. Um, uh, shout out to Dean Barry for helping me get introduced to Robin Black. Yeah. If you never see Robin break down in the videos, he's a fantastic commentator. He he looks at things very specifically. We've talked to Chris Cyborg. We've talked to CM Punk. Um, you're going to have to edit this out. Hold on one second. I'm almost done. <laughs> Knock at the door. Knock at the door. So, yeah. um, But I've, I've talked to C uh, Phil Davis was a great interview. Talked to uh, Ray Thompson last week, Stephen Thompson's father. Uh, I talked to, um, man, uh, let me see here. Um, I'm trying to remember the trainer. He's uh, Anthony uh, Pettis and Sergio Pettis' trainer. Uh, uh, Duke Rufus. Um, and, you know, Raymond's been on and Ross has been on to help us out and everything. And that's been fun. So we do that just about every Friday night for Bellator. Uh, we should be doing the one. Raymond's fighting on September 11th, the next uh, Bellator event. So we usually cover the Friday events and hopefully we'll do a Friday, Saturday. It's live and it's, uh, you know, we, we do the stream of the undercard. And then we turn that off and watch the main card on TV. So it's always fun. Um, the last one got like 17,000, 18,000 views. We're building a big audience with people and everything. So uh, definitely stop. I'll post that. And I usually post it to the SMA page. I'd love to have yeah. you stop on by. It's, a, it's just like if we, if we weren't um, doing thing, um, uh, you know, we would be in a bar. Uh, uh, we would be just sitting around talking, uh, talking to people, and we get to break down and look at, you know, high-level martial arts techniques for professional for, for professional combat sports. That's awesome, man! Living the life. Yeah, man, it's uh, it, it's great, and who knows what this will turn into? Maybe I get you know do some more and everything. Uh, it's it's been fun. It's been great to do that. I've had the pleasure of going to a couple Bell Tour events and a lot of Glory events uh, to cover as, as SMA. Uh, we were over in London and we were like, hey, there's yeah. one, let, let's go cover that and uh, cover Michael Page out there. So that's a lot of fun to me. And it's a, it's a great part of bringing that story to people. And we have future competitors in professional combat sports today. We do. In sports karate. They're out there. They all come from somewhere and they all are looking up at people and they want to be a part of it. So this is a great part about that. Welcome again. Once again, I appreciate you coming on here and I appreciate the work that, you know, you, Emily, Nick, all the sport martial arts crew do uh, for the sport, for the competitors. You know, I, I think you guys are the, the best at it and, you know, you, know, you guys prove it uh, all the time with all the events and all the coverage that you do. And uh, for those of you guys who are listening, I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, you know, share it to your friends, let them know about it. I appreciate all of you guys. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. See ya. Perfect.